Hello, and welcome to the Shuko Disneyland monorail system. I'm Doug Burwell, and I'm an operator collector of the monorails, and I'll be your host for just a brief few minutes as I explain some of the sets that Shuko made that, of course, featured the Disneyland monorail. Shuko was a company, a toy company, that was based in western Germany at the time. And they made the monorails in HO scale, and very close to HO scale anyway. 190th scale is what it was, and usually HO is considered 187th, so you can see it's fairly close. But they made the monorails from 1961 to 1969. And this is using information that I can find based on catalogs and on other written materials that I've read about the toy company Shuko. So you can see that they were a little late coming out with their model, 1961, when the real Mark I was on Disneyland's tracks in 1959. So let's take a look at the Disneyland monorail sets that Shuko offered. The first one we're going to look at is, of course, the first one that they did make. And it's the 6333G set. And all the small sets had that same identification. The G stood for gift. But this one, everything came in a yellow insert. And uh, the insert is made of plastic, a very thin plastic. And this cracks very easily, just from the weight of the track and the terrain itself. It would crack, so it's very hard to find one of these without cracks in it. It did have a good number of track. It had 16 pieces, 12 curve and 4 straight, and a great variety of pylons, different heights. And it did come with either the blue or a red monorail, and that was just like at the park. There was a red and a blue Mark I. You may have noticed on the Shuko version, they put a bubble on the front and the back. And that's probably because of manufacturing expense. It probably saved them some money not to make two different molds. They just used one mold. The other thing that they did with this set is that there's no tail fins in the back. And we're very familiar with the tail fins of the Mark I. And, and again, this was probably a manufacturing savings. Instead of making a mold with the tail fins, they just made this, used the same one that was in the front. The other thing that this set did not have, the, the trains in this set did not have, were a uh, black weight in the front. And you could buy this later, it was an option. And in the later monorails, it, it came standard. The next set I'm going to show you is a later version of the 6333G. And here you can see they did stamp a G on, on the lid. The G again stood for gift. You can see things have changed a little bit. This is yellow, but it's not plastic anymore. It's styrofoam, so you don't have to worry about it cracking. You only received 12 pieces of track, and you only received eight pylons in this set. But what you did get was a different monorail, one with tail fins on it. You can see there. Now, the monorail came in three colors now. It came in blue, red, or silver. And no one really knows, or I can't find out, why there was a silver monorail made. There, would, there was never, at the park, a silver Mark I monorail. The only explanation that I can come close to is, uh, after talking with someone that worked at the factory, um, they said that silver was kind of Shuko's trademark color, and most of the cars and toys that they made came in a silver, so maybe they felt that they needed to make a silver monorail, and that's about the closest explanation I can find as to why they did that. Another change that Shuko made in this monorail was they made the front end a little heavier. It, it gave it better traction when it was going up and down the hills. And what they did was they put a black weight, and there's one that stuck out a little bit further than the skirts on the monorail, and on the other side, it, it did not stick out any further. And this was used, this weight was used not only to give it better traction, but it was also used to trigger a special unit. And when it went over that unit uh, on the layout, the layout that I had at the beginning of the program uh, was triggering another monorail, and that's how it was doing it. It was using that weight. It was actually pushing down on a switch, and that in turn was making contact, electrical contact, and making the switches switch. You could get the weights as an accessory, for the monorail, if you had one of the earlier versions, you could add it on later. Before we go on to the other sets that Shuko offered, I thought it would be fun to look at the different lid styles that Shuko made during the years. Uh, I left the lid off of this one at first here so you could see that there's now uh, white styrofoam in this one. So they did uh, make a variety of different inserts in the middle. It's uh, pretty much all the same. The parts are all the same. The track, however, now is brass. It's no longer the steel like you saw in the yellow 
uh, plastic insert, and so you no longer had to worry about uh, erasing the black off the track or having the track rust if you lived in, a, in an area where there was a lot of moisture. So I'll put the lid back on here, and this is the typical lid of the first sets. It was a beautiful graphic that they made. But then later, I'm guessing because of, uh, it must have been because of costs, uh, they went to a more plain box, and, and this one has the red paper on it. And this red paper you'll see in the, the next two sets that I'm going to show you here soon. And this was kind of a characteristic that, that Shuko used was this red paper. It was a style that they used. But all they did was they put uh, a cover of the manual on the front and also a picture of the monorail on the front. And then you can see here they didn't even bother putting the red paper on. They just used a plain old brown box. This uh, box up here in the corner, uh, this one you don't see too often. And I, I, I guess there is a chance that someone could have made this themselves. But I've seen more than one set like this. And that is it's wrapped in the red paper, but then someone took the graphic from an S set, which we haven't talked about yet, and they glued that on the top. So that's another interesting variation of the lid. The next set that I would like to show you is the H set, or sometimes referred to as the American set. And you can see that this is a little bit bigger, and when I open it up, I think you'll see that it's quite a bit bigger than the G set. You see the familiar graphic that were on the G set lids, and you also see the red paper that I was talking about. And then on the side over here, there were a couple of pictures that showed you some layouts that you can make, and it also showed you some of the accessories that came inside. So let's take a look. So here it is, and it had the brass track. This insert is yellow plastic, just like the very, very first G set that I showed you. So it is hard to find one of these that isn't cracked. Um, on this one, there's a blue monorail. It's three car. It has the tail fin and the weights. But this blue is a little bit different than the one that I showed you uh, with the first G set. This blue is sometimes referred to as the turquoise blue color. And I'm not sure why Shuko changed the colors. And what they also did was sometimes they would mix and match the blues. So maybe you would get two turquoise uh, car units and one sky blue middle unit. And they did this pretty often on their three and four car. Sometimes it's hard to get a complete train set with the same colors. The other thing, now again, that you received in this set was this one switch. You only received one switch. So that means you could do a turnout and park your monorail on that turnout. And so a piece that came unique to this set was the end of track bumper so that you wouldn't run the monorail just you know, zip it off the end of the track. It did come with one block signal too, which was nice. The special thing that this set came with was usually it came with an English manual. It didn't always come with one, but it usually came with an English manual. And the English manual was very hard to find. And it's very valuable today if you do find one. And it's probably because this set was made pretty much for the North American market, which is why it's referred to as the American set. You would find this set in FAO Schwartz and in other hobby shops across the United States and probably up in Canada. I'm not sure why people refer to it as the H set. And my guess is that probably H was the next letter in the alphabet after G, but G did stand for gift. H, I have no idea if it stands for anything, and I have a feeling somebody just started referring to it as that because it was the next letter in the alphabet. I have seen this set listed in some old catalogs for around $47.88. So for eight more dollars than the G set, uh, this was a pretty good price for what you received. However, it still was a fairly expensive toy at the time. The last set I'm going to show you is the 6333S set. And the S did stand for super. And in this case, it was a super set. It had a lot in it. And you can see on the pictures, you could build a couple of big layouts. And also, it came with uh, a lot of accessories inside, which they pictured some of the switches and the block signals that came with it. Inside, it's still that plastic yellow insert. And again, like all the other sets, this one's hard to find without any cracks in it. You, you did receive enough track to do an up and over figure eight, but on top of it, you did get two switches so that you could have 
like a, a sidetrack or a, you could divert the train into another railing and then come back out on your main line. And look what you got for your monorail. And I did bring a silver one. This is a Mark II instead of a Mark I. It's got four cars, and this is the only set that came with the four cars. And the thing that makes it a four car is, of course, the extra middle car and this car, this piece that's in the middle. This piece is called a bolster. And that piece is very hard to find, even though it was sold as an accessory um, separate. Um, you could buy it with the middle car and the bolster. It's still very difficult to find. The S set listed for $89.95 at the Disneyland Park, and that was a real hefty price in the 60s. So figure with your taxes and everything, this set almost cost you $100. So they sold very few of them at the park. And you'll also notice as we're wrapping up our sets that none of these came with a transformer. There was a transformer made by Shuko for the monorails. It was a number 150, and it was a great transformer to have because it had all the correct voltages for the trains and for the switches and for the block signals. But again, it didn't come with any of the sets. And finally, I have seen a couple different versions of this lid. This is the typical one that you see, but I have seen it with black paper here, and I have seen it without this graphic at all, so it's just red paper. Collecting the Shuko Disneyland monorail is a great hobby. It's a great hobby for people like me who are young at heart, and a great hobby for people who are, well, just plain young. If you have a layout set up and you have a child in your house, I think you'll find that it's easy for them to turn the monorails on, run them forward, run them backwards, and simply enjoy the monorails. My suggestion is, is that if you are going to allow them to pick the trains off the track, that you show them how to handle them with care. Because if they were to drop these, they usually land on their nose and the plastic shell can crack. The other thing is that we all know that a young child is going to want to run these at full blast. It's just in their nature that they want to do that. And that's the great feature about these, is that they hug the track, and so you can run them at full speed, and they'll never derail. Another argument that people may have for not collecting the Shuko Disneyland monorails is that they are kind of expensive. But I think if you really look at the cost of these and compare it to the cost of, say, buying a brand new quality toy train today, I think you'll find that the prices are comparable. So the only thing left for me to say is keep your hands and arms inside the window at all times and no smoking, please. Mm -hmm.